There's a lot of talk about the adoption of cloud native practices in the telecom sector, but where exactly are we right now? And what does it mean for critical issues such as network management and security? Well, to find out more, I'm talking with Jeff Edlin, CTO Communications Technology Group at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So, uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Uh, from your perspective as essentially the CTO for HPE in the telecom sector, what do you see as the key priorities for telcos during the next few years? Yeah, thanks for the question. So, you know, from a priority perspective, I think they really need to pay attention to three things. One is um, they've built their non-standalone networks. So essentially a, a network in 5G that is supported from a call handling perspective by the 4G network. And they need to now focus on building their 5G standalone network. The reason for that is the 5G standalone network really brings a lot of new service value that they can actually monetize. The second thing that I think that they really need to pay attention to is starting to value those services and cha charge for them versus continuing this uh, plan of charging customers for moving data payloads from one place to another place. Uh, the future is really valuing the services that can be delivered on the network. And, and then the final thing that I think that they really need to pay attention to is uh, the disruption that's going to occur as we start to move into the cloudification of many parts of the network that previously were uh, very proprietary. They're moving to technologies that are highly distributed. There's an elimination of um, proprietary telco protocols and moving to more IT protocols. And so, you know, this is going to give them a great advantage. It's going to give them access to new talent pools, but it is going to cause disruption that they really need to pay attention to as they start to move into the 5G era. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, virtual machines and NFVI took longer than anticipated to catch on with the telco community. Uh, do you think the adoption of disaggregation, cloud native and microservices will also be slow? Uh, I mean, what are the barriers holding back progress in this area? I think that the barriers are really more about um, technical resources, people, than it is uh, technology. And these telcos are going to have to move fast um, and much faster than we did with NFVI. And the reason for that is because of the hyperscalers and the number of uh, capabilities that the hyperscalers can bring to the table in the cloud. And so the carriers, they really need to move fast on making sure that they cloudify and make more cloud native the services that they can deliver. Um, and, and, and frankly, they need to find ways to not uh, fight with the hyperscalers, but to partner with them and make sure that they have a, a better together approach associated with uh, delivering the new uh, 5G network and services. Okay. And, and from a network operator perspective, what does the shift to cloud native mean for network security processes? Well, so uh, there's a number of things here. So one, you know, the network becomes far more distributed with some centralized services, things like uh, policy and authentication. But um, it also, the new network removes a lot of the proprietary telco protocols that we had before, like SS7. And it replaces them with uh, industry standard kind of IT protocols like HTTPS. So I always talk about the security model for the new telco network, the cloudified telco network from a perspective of four Cs. So you've got to take care, and they're built like an onion. So code 
your application lives at the center of that onion, and that's the first C. And you need to use secure software development practices in order to build the code. Then the next wrapper around that is the container. And so your container platform has a number of security features that are built into it that you need to take advantage of in your code. Then wrapped around the container is the cluster management platform. And the cluster management platform not only controls things like where uh, a container is placed and what applications are running, but it also controls the interplay between other um, container platforms that are delivering the services. And then finally, uh, around that, um, you actually have the cloud. And so the cloud has a lot of security features to make sure that we have uh, good authentication of users and processes, that we enforce uh, policies, that um, you know, we do, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that as you enter into the core of that model where the, where the actual code lives, that everything is being done in a secure manner. So code, container, a cluster and cloud are the four layers of security for uh, the new environment. Now, there appear to be many benefits to having a distributed network architecture with edge hosted microservices. But how does this impact service and policy management? Is it possible to have a distributed telco cloud and also have a single consistent source of truth about the state of the network, services, and subscribers? Uh, yeah, it, it absolutely is possible. Um, but I will tell you that um, because of the fact that you've distributed the network, there's more complexity associated to it. And so it, at least with uh, HPE, our approach is that we treat everything, whether it's a a physical asset like a network NIC or a CPU that's providing a, a compute or an operating system or an application as if they are services and services that can be addressed. And then what we do is we have a centralized service orchestration function that then coordinates activities out to the edge with another orchestration function that we have called uh, Edge Orchestrator. We centralize all of the policies, all of the rules, and all of the workflows associated with um, provisioning, activating, and then managing the full life cycle of a service from the core. And then we distribute instructions and applications and services out to the edge and um, manage the interplay of those edges back at the core. Now, uh, let's shift now to a little bit more of a, a business perspective. Uh, what is the, the process for taking new edge app ideas and turning them into real world use cases that can drive new revenues for telcos? Yeah, so the advice I've been giving is to really focus on the things that you've always wanted to do or dreamed about but you couldn't achieve because you didn't have the underlying network in order to enable that service efficiently. So um, one of the technologies that is available in the new network is this thing called an ultra reliable, low latency communications network slice. In layman's terms, that means that the response time from an application you know, wanting to send something wirelessly to an entity and get it back is measured in milliseconds um, and usually under 10 milliseconds. When you have that, you can then start to put a lot of business applications together that really weren't feasible in a mobile environment before. Things like augmented reality, so um, imagine someone going to uh, work on a piece of equipment. They can put on some AR glasses. They can still see what they're working on. But um, a service personnel or a support personnel could be in the background saying, OK, I'm looking at you know, what you're looking at and draw a circle around, hey, this is the screw I want you to turn, or this is the board I want you to examine. 
Then there's a whole bunch of um, very low latent response applications like um, autonomous driving or vehicle to X communications. And X would mean talking to another vehicle. It could be talking to some instru instrumentation on the road or within the city municipality where very quick response time is required. And so um, in that kind of an application, you can then get vehicles to coordinate with each other and platoon within the context of a highway. They can coordinate with each other within the municipality to make traffic flow more evenly. You can adjust the municipality uh, based upon the traffic patterns that are going on during a particular part of the day. And those are things that we really haven't been able to do before. But now that we have this low latency capability, um, these are the kind of uh, applications and services that can be implemented. And then uh, the carriers, the operators, the service providers can charge for these. Okay. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the, the telcos obviously need to engage with and work with the hyperscalers. But how can those relationships work best from a business perspective? How can the telcos ensure they don't miss out on the value added service revenues? Yeah. Um, so I think that the carriers need to think about this from uh, three different perspectives. The first one is, is that, you know, the the hyperscaler, the cloud service provider, they don't have that millimeter wireless uh, communications to the customer. That is uniquely the carrier space and the hyperscaler, um, they aren't going to go invest in the same way that the carriers did in spectrum and in radio equipment to reach the customer. So they're very valuable from that perspective. Now, the hyperscalers have a cloud and they're in the business of IT and they're pushing the cloud to the edge. I would encourage service providers not to get into the business of attempting to become alternative clouds. I don't think that that's a winner business model. Rather, you put together relationships with the cloud providers and take advantage of what they can deliver rather than building your own cloud, having to have cloud teams, having to support all of that infrastructure and all of that complexity. Then the third thing is to make sure that they're thinking about this new service delivery model and the new capabilities that they have from a perspective of providing value added services. It really doesn't matter um, what it costs to move a payload from point A to point B. What's most important is what is that payload doing and what's the value that I can assign to that payload? And then what sort of relationships can I put in place with um, the value added service providers that I want to traverse through my network such that I can share in the revenue that is generated by that service? Um, you know, the, the hyperscalers, the cloud providers, they are equally going to be envisioning and imagining what kind of services that they can present over this 5G network. And what the service provider needs to keep in mind is that, you know, if that cloud service provider wants access to massive broadband for streaming 4K or 8K video, or that hyperscaler wants to enable a service um, that needs really low latency, or they want to enable an IoT service, those are core values of the service provider, and they really need to monetize those as services versus moving data payloads from one place to another. Okay, well, lots of great insights and advice there, Jeff. Thanks very much for joining us today and sharing your thoughts on the industry. Yeah, thank you very much. It was uh, great to talk to you.